Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. Bremont is not a brand I actively sought out to own, and there's a few reasons for this. None of them related to the actual quality of the watches that they produce. I've tried on their watches a few times, usually while at Heathrow Airport, and I've always believed that these watches were very well made. Their pricing strategy pushes the limits of what I'd personally spend on a brand like this though, and I find myself slightly overwhelmed by their aggressive marketing strategy. What I mean is that I often found it difficult to navigate their catalogue. So many special editions, so many elaborate stories, and so many different designs. I typically prefer brands and designs that are a bit more focused and have a more cohesive identity. Sure, they're not as scattered as Seiko, but I perceive them as having their fingers in too many different pies. That said, they're an impressive brand that seem to be constantly improving and consistently growing. They recently opened a pretty large manufacturing facility in England and they do a lot of R&D and testing on site. I respect their desire to move as much of their manufacturing in-house and they're turning out to be one of the proponents of British watchmaking. I'm a sucker for small seconds watches, tool watches and just good looking dials so when I saw the broadsword bronze at what I believe to be a good price, I did not hesitate. And I'm glad I didn't because I finally get to get my grubby paws all over this watch and dive into the details. And the details speak volumes. This watch has a retail price of US$3,800, but if you keep your eyes peeled and are patient enough, you'll find some deals on them like I did. Let's check it out. I measured the case to be 39.7mm in diameter, 46.25mm from lug to lug, and 11.9mm in height. The case is made of CUSN8, which is a bronze alloy with 8% tin that makes it more resistant to wear and corrosion. I expect this to patina slowly and more uniformly when compared to what happens to an Auris, for example. If this alloy patinas in a similar way to the aluminum-based alloy that Tudor and Helios use, I'll be thrilled. I believe this will take on a dark brown patina rather than the lighter reddish brown that Tudor and Helios watches eventually settle at. Right now it's brand new and therefore is in its purest form, which is a stunning, almost rose gold color. The finishing on this case is beyond incredible and the corners, edges and brush strokes are on par with my Grand Seiko. The case makes use of all of its 11.9mm height because of its short bezel section and flat case back, so it appears to be a taller case than it really is. There are lines running along the case flanks to add some relief to an otherwise plain brushed finishing. A beautiful beveled edge transitions from the case to the bottom of the lugs, which looks pretty incredible in person and under a lens. Great design work and an excellent combination of brushing patterns on the lugs. The lug width is 20mm and the lugs are not drilled through. There is a brushed bezel section that seats a slightly domed sapphire crystal. Bremont says that it's been treated with AR coating but I think it could have used a few more layers as it tends to pick up light given its curved design. There is a 6.85mm screw down crown at the 3 o'clock position that is very easy to grip and operate. I love the design and the size and is definitely true to older military pilot and field watches. The crown has a black what appears to be enamel top with the brand's propeller logo in the same rose gold bronze color. There isn't any crown or stem wobble and the crown feels great to operate. Flipping it over you have a screw down case pack made of stainless steel that has the heraldic badges of the Royal Navy, the British Army and the Royal Air Force. The case pack is flat and results in a very comfortable wrist experience. I will say that the stainless steel looks more like titanium given its pale grey colour. This watch is rated for up to 100 meters of water resistance. The broadsword bronze is offered in three dial colours, a brown tobacco dial, a grey slate dial and this Sotec dial which is a very interesting colour as it takes on many personalities depending on the lighting, all the way from a light teal to a deep brown. I think their choice of colours for these bronze watches is perfect for both their fresh state as well as what they look like once it starts to patina. There is a slope chapter ring that has loomed white pips for the hour markers, beige sticks for the minute markers, dual pips above the 12 o'clock marker and London printed above the 6 o'clock marker. The printing quality is excellent and the finishing is spot on. This watch has printed Arabic numerals in white that are also loomed and each hour marker also has a marker between it and the chapter ring. I love these little markers as they balance out the overall symmetry of the dial when you get to the date window and 6 o'clock marker. Great stuff. You then have a date window at the 3 o'clock position with the black date wheel background and white text. A color match date wheel would have looked nice here, but the black date wheel doesn't stand out on this dial as much as I think it would on the grey and brown. The date window has a printed border and the finishing is excellent. Above the 6 o'clock marker, you have a small second sub dial that is slightly recessed into the dial. 
There is a printed second strike with white ticks for the 5 second increments and Arabic markers for the 20 second increments. The printing quality on this watch is excellent and the subdial is no exception. The brand's name and logo is printed below the 12 o'clock index with HMAF below it, which is an abbreviation of Her Majesty's Armed Forces, since this is a Bremont and you can't have a Bremont without a connection to the military. The hands look like bronze and have a brushed finish. The proportions are excellent, small seconds hand included. All three hands have large loom sections and the overall finishing is excellent. Another minor detail that I love is the fact that the pinion is capped. Not a lot of brands do this, but I think it is the right way to do it and everything just looks very neat and clean. Overall, I'm a fan of this watch and of this dial. I would have preferred a no date at all or a color match date window, but apart from that, everything else is just perfect. Since this is supposed to be a functional tool watch, I expect very good loom design and performance and this watch happens to deliver on both fronts. Bremont doesn't mention what grade loom they're using, but I'll take a guess and say this is grade X1 Superluminova. The hour marker pips on the chapter ring glow very bright and hold their charge well. The Arabic numerals are also generously loomed along with the little ticks that accompany them. I love how symmetric and legible this dial is in the dark. Both the hour and minute hands are also very well loomed, but the real icing on the cake for me is the loomed small seconds hand above the 6 o'clock marker. I love subdial hands that are loomed and this one design element says a lot about the brand to me. This watch uses what Bremont calls the BE952AV movement, which I believe is a Salita SW260-1, or a similar ETA2824-2 based architecture. This movement is chronometer rated and ISO 3159 certified, and the package includes this testing certificate. At the suggested retail price of roughly $3,800, I think it's reasonable for a buyer to expect an in-house movement. Personally, I'm fine with the chronometer rated off-the-shelf movement in a watch like this just because of how easy it is to have it serviced. But those looking for an in-house movement experience will likely go with the Tudor Black Bay 58 instead of this. The Kinesi movement on the Tudors don't look any prettier than this one to be honest, but the 70 hour power reserve compared to the 48 hours on this one make it a tempting alternative. But in-house versus off-the-shelf is a decision you have to make, and you have the luxury of making in this price range, so enjoy it. On my time grapher, I observe roughly plus 5 seconds per day in the dial up position and plus 2 seconds per day in the crown up position and plus 2 seconds per day in the 12 up position. So it seems to be fairly healthy and operating within certified bounds. The 39.7mm diameter and 46.25mm lug to lug width sit well on my 6.5 inch wrist. I think this watch wears exactly how you'd imagine the dimensions to wear. The height of 11.9mm actually feels a bit thicker than you'd expect since the entire 11.9mm height is being used without any relief cut out of the case sides and it has a very flat case back. It feels hefty and utilitarian and I like that. It isn't a big watch and it isn't a small watch either. It wears comfortably on my wrist and everything just comes together well. This watch ships with a leather strap and a matching bronze buckle. I'm not a huge fan of the strap and a piece of the glued leather came undone after less than an hour of wearing it. But Bremont customer service has been beyond excellent and have offered to ship me two replacement straps of my choice. Errors are inevitable when buying watches, but what sticks is good customer service, and so far they've been brilliant. Overall, I think this watch is fantastic. This isn't the first Bremont I've handled and I've checked out their watches a few times over the past few years. The quality wasn't ever in question, but it was always the pricing. At 3800 US dollars, I think you're going to really have to love this watch to ignore some of the other competition in the price range. The $3,000 to $4,000 price range is currently being dominated by Tudor and Grey Market Omega watches. But if you've already got watches like that in your collection and are looking for something a bit less mainstream, this is a great option. If you can find one of these watches in the $2,500 to $3,000 range on the pre-owned market, I highly recommend checking them out. They're well built, designed well, finished well and deliver a really enjoyable ownership experience. From here on, I'll restrain myself from cracking more jokes about Bremont and some of their marketing cliches because the final product being delivered is pretty solid stuff and I'm now a fan. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to read my other reviews in the link below.